Bethany Hamilton is a role model for millions around the globe. She inspires not merely by her words, but more so through her actions and her attitude. She is truly dynamic. At the age of four, she started surfing. By the age of eight, she was already competing. At 13 years of age, Bethany was surfing um, on the coast of Kauai. She was attacked by a 15 foot tiger shark where she lost her left arm. This made news globally. For those of you who have watched her movie, Soul Surfer, it is an awesome movie. Back in July, she released a documentary, Bethany Hamilton, Unstoppable. If you wanna get inspired, you wanna get stoked, check this movie out. You can do so on DVD version or digital, and it's appropriate for adults and young kids. And if you wanna talk about a positive message and, and the beauty of determination, being authentic to yourself and pushing yourself in a way that so many of us simply don't, check it out. It is something that I promise you that you can watch with your friends, or make a family, youth group, whatever event. It is tremendous. Bethany Hamilton, Unstoppable. Bethany also um, is beginning a 12-month um, course, that's a life coaching course, about becoming unstoppable. Um, the focus on living your best life, and you can check that out, both of those, on bethanyhamilton.com. So Bethany Hamilton was not just a survivor of a shark attack, but bus, but less than a year later she was back on the circuit surfing and now more than a decade later bethany is now a wife and a mom not just chasing big waves but also two little ones she is an inspiration and i'm so exceptionally honored and excited for today's episode so good morning today from vero beach florida uh, i am excited stoked and whatever words you want to of positivity about today's guest, I have Bethany Hamilton with me. Bethany, I want to say thank you um, for joining me today. Yeah, of course. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> and I know we're, we're chatting. You know, I've got um, Eastern Standard Time. It is 8 a.m. your time in Hawaii. So what time have you, did your little guys have you up this morning pretty early? Oh my gosh, they were up at five, but my sweet husband let me sleep in and he woke me up about 20 minutes ago. So I was rushing to be ready for you. That's all good. And <laughs> I appreciate I, you being here. Yeah, I would be really thankful because I haven't slept in much lately. So. Okay. And that, and having little dudes can do that too. And you have two, right? Yeah. Yeah. Two little guys. Is it, and uh, Tobias is four and Wesley one. Is that correct? Yeah, so my hands are full, or my <laughs> hand, one hand is full. Well, I mean, like, I think kids kick things up into a totally different, like, realm of things when uh, they, they yeah. keep running. Yeah, they keep you on your toes all day long in the most awesome way, though. It's really fun. I would, it's it's a blessing. I took my, my little guy's forearm was up at 5.15 this morning. And uh, I said, the sun's not up, so let's, let's uh, but you know, when they're up, they're up kind of thing. <laughs> ah. yeah. um, and I know you've, you've, you're kind of a little bit in limbo right now that um, not too long ago, you had a little bit of a strain um, on your elbow. So I know that kind of freed up a little bit of time for you, which I know you're super busy, but um, how are you holding up with that injury? Yeah, it's been, um... It, well, the funny thing is my husband had to take care of me a lot because it was my elbow and so I have the one arm and so, <laughs> but it was good for us. Like uh, my love language is acts of service. <laughs> so he was just taking care of me and doing sweet things all the time. So was, my love tank got extra full. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's a beautiful thing and, and I, um, really admire the relationship that that you two have as partners that it's it's about really serving each other and and filling each other's cup and um the power of of kindness and and giving when you know the other one might be down for the count for a little bit whether it's you know you hurt your elbow whether you have the flu or work is really tough or whatever it is um the beauty and kind of just i don't know the sacrifices we we have to what we make in relationships yeah it totally and he is yeah he is definitely an example of like caring for others and serving and yeah he makes he's an amazing husband and dad and friend and just stranger too 
Yeah. So <laughs> that's a pretty that's a pretty um, amazing combination of of characteristics and traits, you know. Yeah. <laughs> And, and I do, I mean, you know, kind of gonna give a shout out to your husband who I've never met before, but just watching um, your documentary, uh, Bethany Hamilton, Unstoppable, I was like, wow, you know, the sacrifice he's really made in, in a lot of senses on his end um, and where you guys have gone around the world and how you both just make each other better people. And, the, and, and just watching you guys kind of like, I don't know, interact and the love that you can just see that resonates between both of you and it's like, you know that's what real love is uh, in terms of just it's not not perfect and it's tough <laughs> and there's days uh -huh. you know you might smell or you just feel gross but you love each other yeah yeah it definitely during the filming of unstoppable it's, we started filming like right after we got married so we were still figuring everything out um but <laughs> I think it was a good test and it definitely helped us grow together and especially on his end like I'm chasing my wife's dreams with her right now like and I'm full support so it's just a harder role I think for a man and um, yeah he's just he's a really incredible guy and um, you know you see him and he's very like the epitome of a man you know. <laughs> But he has such another like side to him that is really, um, yeah, it took a lot for him to kind of support me in that way. And um, I think he realizes that you're only going to be serving professionally so long. So yeah. he's like, let's just maximize it while we can. Yeah. And while you're at it, you guys are seeing the world and just yeah. exposing your kids to some amazing things. You know, if you check yeah. out their passport, I'm sure it's pretty I mean, just impressive. Like, what? How much? Yeah, my, my four year old's passport is incredible. <laughs> Which is cool. I mean, that's, it's yeah. so cool. I, I think to me, there's more in life that we can pass on to our kids through experiences mm -hmm. than stuff. And, and it, that absolutely seemed to resonate through, you know, your movie and watching clips of you. And, you know, and I had shared a little bit before we hopped on, we spent about a little more than nine months going around the world with our, he was three years old at the time, hit 23 countries. And like, he'll still reference, you know, when we took that rickshaw down, you know, in Nepal, or we did this, or, you know, I mean, it's just, it's amazing what they learn um, yeah. traveling. Oh, I feel like I shouldn't sidetrack us, but if you were to pick your top three places, not for yourself, but for your kids. I uh, would say, I, I, and you're not sidetracking me. I am the um, the essence <laughs> of the girl, so it's all good. Uh, for with my kids, Jack still talks about Indonesia. We um, okay. we went to ba like islands off the coast of Bali, uh, Nusa Senegon, and we spent some time there. And man, our speed isn't um, isn't cities. It's not anything yeah. super populated. Like it's me grabbing a board and paddling out with him in the morning, and like. You know, hanging out with locals, we jump on a scooter and like veer around chickens and goats and like stop with you know have break coconuts and and rice yeah. with locals. So Indonesia, without question, um, I loved. I don't know if you've been to the Middle East yet, but I love Jordan. Um, oh, we spent wow. some time in the Wadi Rum Desert with with Bedouins, and if you want to talk about connecting with people, the Jordanian people are on my top list. And I've I've been wow. I've been to a heap of countries. Just great. I mean, we camped with Bedouins in the desert, and I'll still talk about, yo, know, we were in the back of a pickup truck and, you know, huddled in these big blankets and, and teaching him the power of kindness and that people look different and people act different and there's different. Yeah. And our kids learn that. They're like little sponges. And so I, I would say, answer your question Indonesia, Jordan, um, oh my gosh, and probably Romania. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So a little bit wow. different mix up there. <laughs> yeah, Jordan and Romania surprised me, but I've been to a new, I've spent more time in Indonesia than any other country. Okay. Besides the U.S., of course. So, what was your favorite part of Indonesia? Indonesia? Ooh, oh gosh, there's so many great areas. I I don't have a favorite. Not Bali though. <laughs> Not but well, we were outside of Bali. Like I don't even know what. Uh, they, no, like, yeah, I heard yeah. what you said. There's yeah, so Bali many and like two people. <laughs> I mean, even like 20 minutes outside of Bali is great. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, my son wanted to move to Bali or the not Bali, but the islands we stayed at. Yeah. I forget, where were we? We were at Roti Island, and he wanted to live there. <laughs> he loved it. But there's he something to it, right? The people are so nice, and it's beautiful, and... Yeah. 
It really is. I think living in Hawaii, you kind of get a, a bit of that world, though I'm, I think the kindness of people is not quite as beautiful as it used to be, but I mean, don't get me wrong, there's still a lot of amazing people out here. It's just, it's a very Americanized island life, but um, still so beautiful in its own way. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, it is. I mean, it's like, I'm like, oh my gosh. And, and I live in Florida, has a little bit of the you know, tropic vibe to it. Definitely not Hawaii, but it is. I think travel makes you appreciate what you have, but sometimes can make you think a little bit about, you know, I don't know, we've met so many amazing people and the kindness with so many of the people that had so little really resonated with me that I'm like, man, yeah. we can get caught up in stuff, so much materialistic stuff. And this person, you know, is giving me their last cup of rice just to sit down and talk. I mean, that's like, Aww. that's kindness. I mean, that that's what it is, you know, not to bust on, you know, the chops of Americans because I love being from America, but it's just different. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so there's, we, we talking about some travel. I'm going to shift things, my friend here, if that's cool, yeah, a little bob and weaving. Sure. So, so jumping into a little bit of, about you, movie was fantastic. I know kind of the premise of it starts with, you know, um, in 2003 with the, with the shark attack. Um, and I know, you know, kind of reflecting a little bit, there's been a, a, a heap of people, I mean, globally that have been some form of a subject of tragedy. And that, that never made the paper, it never went viral like yours did. So you lost your arm and your world changed. But I wanna kinda connect this here, what seems to have you stand out like just exponentially from the vast majority of people out there is what you did with your loss. I mean, how you responded, how you didn't seem to blink in the face of adversity. Um, and and it was it's just epic. And in, in your documentary, there's a clip with you soon after the you know, the, the attack that you're sitting down with a reporter and, and they, he asked you, he said, you know, what, you know, do you think you'll ever get back in the water again? And seriously, without hesitation or blinking, you said, you know, think, I know. So my question to you is where did that fire and confidence come from? <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. I think, well, growing up on an island life, we kept things very simple and my parents definitely instilled in me, like, to like respect and love God, but also like a love for the ocean. And so, you know, we didn't have a whole lot either. We lived, um, you know, they worked really hard to keep things afloat. And so the beach was my playground. So I definitely had just a deep passion for riding waves and the challenge of it, like I thrived in that. And, but I also knew that you know, there's so much more to life than just surfing. So, and that, that was part of like what God gives me. And so when I lost my arm, uh, thankfully my mom and I veered towards the direction of like, wow, I'm just thankful to be alive and breathing because I could very well likely not be here right now. And so kind of approaching like the loss of my arm and all that we were facing at that time with just thankfulness to be alive, took the focus off, oh my gosh, my arm's gone. Like, even though I did feel that moment of like, oh my gosh, my arm's gone. Yeah. Um, but, and I don't know what my future holds, but yeah, I guess just having like a special community of people too and friends and I, had a hint of hope from a guy named Micah Coots who had lost his leg um, and he was like hey I went surfing today and I tried to pop up with one arm and it's fully possible so once I heard that there was just uh, my mind was already set on getting back in the ocean just waiting till the doctor's orders <laughs> and um, yeah so I think I just needed it's funny, I think throughout life, like, I realize more and more that I think about it, like, our community is so important, and I can't say I'm even that type of person to be like, I need my community, you know, like, I'm very, like, independent, and, you know, I'm happy to just talk to my husband and nobody else, but then sometimes I'm like, no, we should go get input or advice from other people, and I've seen like a kind of a pattern in my life where someone gives me a hint of hope and then I run with it. Yeah. And it, it maybe didn't come from me, but 
once I got it, I was ready to charge with the idea or or the the hope or um, you know whatever it may have been. And so I realized just finding those people you can trust is so important. People who don't have an agenda of any sort, mm -hmm. and, um, but just to love on you and encourage you in your journey. And um, so, yeah, I don't know if I answered your question. No, you did, but I, I think the power of community, it, it's, I think it's, trying to find the words here when when you're independent it can be something that can be hard to adjust to but all of us need a sense of community but also like you had said you know I'd get I would you know seek someone else out whether that's you you know and your husband seeking somebody out that you guys trust or when you were you know 13 years old but seeking someone out that, that can lend wisdom and doesn't have an agenda and, and I think clinging to somebody and in a healthy way but we don't have all the answers and finding that encouragement because people, the murmurings, I'm sure that if you flicked on the news at the time, or if you hopped on the internet, there was a lot of negativity, right? I mean, I feel like as, as sometimes within our society, I mean, negativity and, and you know, sells papers and sells whatever, but the po yeah. the power and positive, I mean, is massive and, and being, I'd say, careful about who you trust. But I, I mean, I'm sure, yeah, that, I mean, that's awesome. That was a part of your journey and, and, you know, we're all kind of a work in progress, but being a part of catapulting you towards, I mean, shredding again. I mean, I'm like, oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> and then like ever since then, it's just really having kind of my feet placed on a rock and my rock is not in me and like my abilities and my awesomeness or whatever. Not that I like think of myself like that. Awesome. But, like, <laughs> I, my rock is God. And so whatever like crazy waves that crash on me, the life waves, um, I'm not so unstable, you know, I just, it, I know it's going to be okay, like, I'm, and even though the momentary pains come, but it's, I know that at some point, like, I have the, I always have the peace of God, and mm -hmm. that is there to sustain me through whatever <laughs> craziness, and so, yeah, I think just having kind of your rock and the things that bring you hope and and just having passions too like i mean god didn't like give me surfing for nothing like mm -hmm. it's not just my hobby though i think it's the most awesome hobby that everyone should have <laughs> that, <laughs> i would agree with that statement <laughs> yeah so um yeah i'm just thankful that i just kind of have balance in all these different areas that yeah lead me to keep putting along <laughs> yeah and and because i i you know think life is fleeting and and in terms of talking about your rock it, it's amazing um you know when we our faith is found in god i mean you know i i think life happens there's going to be crazy waves that come our way you know literally and figuratively and um having your, your feet to be able to stand on something that you know is not moving not going anywhere yeah. Um, it's kind of a, a rad thing. I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna connect this with a question that I had. If, if you're cool with that, just about how you know sometimes in our lives things don't um, make sense, right? You know, some yeah. things more intense than others. And so, for you, have you ever viewed the day in October 2003 as a blessing? And let me continue a little bit. Where how God used the worst of, of a situation, right? Say God used. Um, you know your situation to bring blessings not only to you but in your situation specifically millions of other people and how when sometimes we'll say use the the air quote terms you know a tragedy happens and we get kind of lost in the moment which can be easy to get lost into but fast forward a little bit how it can be used to impact i mean countless human beings so kind of throwing that your way i mean have you ever gotten to the point where you're like, you know what, I, I look as this as, I don't know if you want to use blessing, gift, or yeah. whatever the heck. Yeah, no, I totally um, received the loss of my arm as a blessing because all the good that has come out of it. It's just an unsurmountable, unsurmountable amount of good has come from um, just being able to share my story. And I don't know, I think I was meant for more challenge. <laughs> Every day I go out surfing, it's not easy, but I just love it. And um, 
I think we all we all are facing challenge. So just having those different stories of like reminders that oh my gosh, I remember I I mean just this last week I lost my or I didn't lose my arm, but <laughs> my one arm got hurt, and so I keep yeah. thinking of my friends who have no arms. I'm like, how do they do it? Like. Yeah. And I keep thinking of their stories and their resiliency and um, I've just been encouraged by them. So I know that like there's a lot of moments that I don't even know about that um, good has come from losing my arm and, and just the hope that I'm able to bring through sh my storytelling. So um, yeah, I definitely see the good and beauty and um, I actually, I started, my family and I started a nonprofit called Friends of Bethany, and every year we put on a retreat for young women with limb difference, and awesome. we have a, like four or five days together of just encouraging all these women in their journey. Um, they've either, either been born through that or been through traumatic um, injuries, and so yeah, it's been, it's my favorite event of the year to be a part of, and it's so emotionally draining, but also beautiful and uplifting and you leave like inspired and encouraged. And I mean, part of it is I'm in, in that inspiring and encouraging, but then I also like receive so much through the event. And like that event just reminds me that like, it's not all about me. Like there's so many of us facing um, painful times and yeah, there's beauty and, and unselfishness and giving and being a blessing to others. And so my life probably would have been a lot more selfish and self-ambitioned and self-focused if I didn't lose my arm. Whereas now I like have a lot more compassion on others and just being able to share my life with others is really, really special. So. I just, um, yeah, it's kept things in a healthy perspective. And, and that's what it's all about because it's like all of us have been through things, uh, you know, whether it's, it's, you know, something you can visibly see or internal. I mean, you oh, know, we're, we're all like a walking okay. book. Yeah. Uh, and, and I do think like it's so amazing when we're kind of able to tap into the stuff we've been through and the challenge and the tragedy and really kind of use it um to to em empower and encourage other people you know i one of my philosophies in life is i feel like the people that i've encountered that have just inspired me and encouraged me and i've seen just change do being game life changers are those who've really been through a lot of stuff in life i mean yucky gritty funky trained stuff and they've been able to just say instead of letting this consume me which is so easy to do and make me bitter and angry and just blah i'm going to let it fuel me to just to rock out in life because life's short and what you know our time here I can either encourage people and be used or you know I can just be kind of you know cut down at the ankles and just ah oh, and and which is easy to do um, but it, it's so beautiful when we were able to be used to, to do great things um, such as yourself I'll tell you this I picked my son up uh, from pre-k like just a few hours ago and I had said hey guys just to let you know I was telling him I was interviewing you and everybody in there not only knew who you were but everybody had a story of how you encourage their kid or how you know my little girl knows that you know she can she just wants to serve just like Bethany or I mean the, the the beauty and the kernels of goodness that you evoke from people is just is gnarly dude I mean seriously so it's not you know and you could say well I'm not like you are like the you're awesome and but you're you've allowed yourself to be put out there right to to be able to to be awesome and i think that's I, it's just cool i mean and and i'm going to say so I'm, I'm hopping into another another question here like you you know you were born gifted i mean that's like no questions asked but you didn't settle for gifted right you're like no yeah. you pursued greatness right so what advice do you have right uh, behind the scenes that that they you guys showed some clips you know in your in your yeah. movie about like what you know the time that goes in and you're just like up and you know you're doing weights and you're doing this but all the things people don't see because it's, it's so easy to say look at her drop in the jaws and that gnarly wave and i want to do that i'm like hello just what's 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 all encompassed in yeah. where, where where you've been in terms of like work ethic and commitment so what advice would you give to somebody about 
becoming better at something that they're passionate about or achieving that goal. You know, what, what do you see? I would say my biggest things are be teachable, like work really, really hard, um, be consistent and um, find things to keep your motivation pushing you forward. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just have fun. It has to be centered around something you're passionate about or else you won't be able to keep that motivation going. Yeah. So it's really just finding something that keeps gets you really excited um but it takes work and, wouldn't you say and it takes and work, work incredibly hard um definitely like yeah i i definitely stay really motivated and i'm working hard every single day and since becoming a mom it's become that much harder so i have a, i just find ways to include my kids when i am working hard and like you know, they always say moms are the ultimate multitaskers. Mm -hmm. I definitely have to multitask because I'm like focused on my training yet like like watching my son do something and cheering him on. It's um, awesome. Yeah, so, but yeah, I think too being teachable. I think a lot of our younger generation, um, I don't know, hopefully they can find their way to be teachable. Like I've always thrived in their coaching, getting advice, like, getting input from different people and that has helped me immensely so and, and I agree with you you know the, the aspect of being teachable where it's kind of learning to listen instead of getting defensive like you know ah what I'm doing wrong it's instead of kind of that ticket of, of looking at it as like a ticket of saying what can I do better how can I improve um, because we're all like we're all a work in progress N nobody yeah. you know I mean you're not you know Bethany Hamilton you know, dropping in and, and, you know, at the Fiji Pro after like three weeks of like paddling. That's not, but I think it's a mindset a lot of people have, like, you know, I'll just do that without the work, without the commitment. And yeah. <clears throat> especially now to everything so instantly gratifying mm -hmm. um, with things like the internet and whatnot, but like some of the deeper, more rewarding things in life are take a long process and a long time to get to and um, so finding your kind of um, daily drive and and reason why you're going after whatever it is you're going for and yeah keeping the um, <laughs> the long-term motivation and yeah just keep your head down and finding people to support you along that journey too I mean yeah my family important. always cheered me on and my dad is like the ultimate like supporter dad who he's like the good soccer dad that's like yeah. whichever kid needs yeah and he's like in control but like also very like there and ready to stop drop and help <laughs> yeah i like that stop drop and help <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good job dad um so want to throw this out to you so we're talking about you know we're working hard this generation kind of, there's a whole lot of social media presence, instant gratification, and sometimes things get muddled. So I've asked a lot of kids um, and adults over the years, like, what's your high? And and absolutely, when, when I look in their eyes, they're thinking I, I'm, in the, you know, um, meaning substances, right, which I'm not. And so when I rephrase it to say, like, what's your interest, what's your hobby that gets you stoked? and yeah. about life and there's so many people that can't answer that question and i think there's a massive wave of people oh, out there yeah. that have no stoke would you agree yeah. yeah have you heard of that organization it's called natural high yes it's yes all about like promoting you know find your natural high um instead of you know drugs and alcohol um they're super rad my friend actually owns it so i just like, oh okay that's cool organization for kids um to be a part of <laughs> But, but they need it and it's an absence. Yeah, and when we yeah. first say like high, it's like, well, I'm thinking about a bong or I'm thinking about alcohol or I'm thinking about pills. Yeah. And it's like, we were men as human beings to get our serotonin levels pumping. And when, when I you know, was working in a high school, that was really the core of what I did was about, yeah. let's get high about life. Because if yeah. you don't find your high, it's gonna find you. Yeah. My high is definitely surfing, but I also working out is another form of that. And um, 
So if I can't surf, I really try to get my blood pump in. And even my husband, like, I found, like, he needs to get a workout in, and I respect that, like. So just, I think there's something to it. That movement is a fighter of depression. It brings mm -hmm. good health, and um, it's, it's a good thing to do and make a part of your life, regardless of whether or not you're a professional athlete. Yeah. I think every human being, whether it's going for a walk, it's going for a bike ride, it's, you know, yeah, it's paddling fresh out, air. just fresh air. fresh air. And leave the phone in the car or at mm -hmm. home. Um, but yeah, I think many of our young people just need opportunities too. They got to either create them themselves or, um, you know, I think it would be really cool if the schools created like a course in the schooling um, that presents opportunities for them to try different things because we're lacking creativity and um, you know the kids are just kind of twiddling their thumbs on their devices and mm -hmm. whatnot and they're losing their ability to kind of like go hunt down things to try because they're just bored sitting on their booty. yeah I mean go get dirty go climb up a tree you know go yeah. Roll down a sand dune. I mean, and if you're older, like just trying different things, like putting yourself out there, like try cooking class, like mm -hmm. um, you know, volunteer at like I don't know a nonprofit or um, an event planning thing, or um, just kind of you really have to stretch yourself and put yourself out there to like try different things to find something that kind of clicks with you. I recently tried painting because my grandma is like a really amazing painter. And it's really fun. I, I'm not like, amazing, but I enjoyed it. Not that I have much time to do it right now at this point in my life, but I think it's in the back of my mind. I like think about it frequently. So I'm like, okay, I'll probably paint at some point and like put some time into that once my body is not as limber. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta take self-care, baby, self-care. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I do want to talk about, like, we're talking about all these, these facets of life in terms of determination and focus and finding things that give us purpose and really rocking out life and, you know, connecting it to being, we'll say, you know, unstoppable. And I know you have a course that's out. I jumped on and was, and, and, you know, I know the first part of it was be, about being present and it's such a great course you put, put together. Would you mind sharing a little bit about it? Yeah, thank you. Oh, gosh. Um, it's really cool to be putting a lot of my time into something that really uh, means a lot to me and that I hope is going to just be an encourager for other people out there. Um, I, you know, I'm very present on social media <laughs> and um, I honestly don't really like it that much, but just as an athlete and, and a, uh, public figure I just try to be a part of it um, even though the rebel side of me wants to delete it all and hide out in Kauai yeah. <laughs> um, which I might do someday <laughs> um, but yeah so to me creating the course was a way to get deeper with people and like get more meaningful and just share some of the tools I've learned along the way um, in my own life and things that I think help lead to an unstoppable life and to me, living an unstoppable life is not about ha being perfect and having it all completely figured out, but rather, um, yeah, just being able to face those obstacles and tough times um, positively and, and know that you're going to be able to get beyond and to just live your life in passion and joy and um, purpose. And so creating my course, The Unstoppable Year, um, really was a way for me to just share my heart for others to live their unstoppable lives and um i definitely believe that with god we're able to really live an unstoppable life but there's definitely a lot of tools um and mindsets and things that we can do to um have a life more fulfilling and filled with purpose and reason and the ability to overcome so I've been loving it. It's been really cool to just um, give more to people. And throughout each month, we do like one or two live Q and A's, so it can kind of get a little more personal with everyone. And um, yeah, it's just fun to do something with purpose and you know, outside of the ocean. I, mm. you know, I'm such a mermaid that I could be in the ocean all day, every day. <laughs> 
like not pay attention. Kind of a GoPro <laughs> and, and having them, yeah, talk, yeah, we're on, we're live <laughs> from the ocean. So <laughs> I the, wouldn't hold it against the, you. The course is really, um, it stretched me a lot, uh, but in a really awesome way. And I love just being able to give more. So. And, and it's awesome, but you also have a, a number of guests that are like, you know, how you went back to say, since you've been surfing to your marriage, to, you know, whatever, you've, you're extended yourself and learning more and gaining wisdom from other people who have different yeah. life experiences. And I know you've been able to kind of add that component to your course. Yes. And there's some really amazing people in it. Like um, one guy, Nick Voicechik, uh, I always awesome. know his name, but he has, he was born with no limbs. He has a little stubby foot, but um, this guy is just, yeah, he has trained himself to live life positively and to just look for the good in situations and has so much, um, yeah, just every time I've been around him, I just leave feeling so encouraged and uplifted because he just is one of those people that can just, yeah, put things into perspective. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's like when you talk to people with whatever their their challenge, whatever their tragedy, th th those positive people, it makes you realize like not only do we all have stuff, but we allow ourselves to be used and like just be hungry for life and live life. Just the things we're able to do because when we think negative and we are around negativity or negative people, it can just, it, it, it holds you back. And I, I've seen a bunch of different videos with Nick and different talks he's given. And I'm like, the guy's a rock star. And there's yeah. no excuse where it's, I mean, he's being used to change lives, but he's also living life. I mean, he's, you know, on a surfboard, you know, he's, yeah. he's like <laughs> sledding. I'm like the dude, he's, he's awesome. And too often we allow our, our thoughts to get in our mind that are just almost cancerous that you can't, you can't, you can't, and then you can't. Yeah, I know. I really actually would love to talk to Nick's parents. <laughs> um, and get to that would be that would be awesome because they must be some amazing people. Just yeah. the way he's. I mean, I know God has shaped him a lot, and um, just his circumstances shaped him a ton. But I love like he shares this story where he's like maybe six years old, and he's like, "Mom, can you get that book for me up on the bookshelf?" and Imagine this little, little kid who has no legs so he's and no arms, and she's like, no, you go get it yourself. And he's like, gosh, mom, you're so mean. Yeah. <laughs> but that was like, um, to me, that speaks like wonders to parenting. Like, don't do yeah. everything for your kids, even if it's challenging and you want yeah. to, um, you might be like slowing them down. At, mm -hmm their ability to um, problem solve. So eventually Nick did get the book off the bookshelf. He had to work hard for it, but he got yeah. there. And it, I think like that shaped That's him. beautiful, man. I mean, I would say, what? I mean, but like, look I where know. he is now as a grown man. And yeah. what he's, you know, instead of feeling like I can't do anything, well, what can't you do? Is kind of yeah, how- If y'all are ever having a pity party, just look up Nick and yeah. you will um, turn that pity party into like a wow party. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. It's all about what we, you know, kind of put in. I, I, I'm a big believer in having a funnel and a filter for what we put in our ears and what we watch and what we expose ourselves to, um, because I think we absorb that. And that's when, you know, sitting down watching your movie, I'm like, you know, with all the, the chaos and the noise and the negativity and the grossness that's out in the world today, um, yeah. every parent, you know, Friday night, Thursday night, let's sit down and watch this movie. And and I, one of the things I'm stoked about, I'm talking with our church and a bunch of other people within our community about making a community event to be able to reserve um, theater space to show your movie. Like oh, make it a community so event. I'm like, oh, I'm so stoked. You know, like let's sell tickets, let's get excited. Let's get positive and empower yeah. the focus with our kids. We have so many hurting, broken kids that I yeah. can't, I can't, or feel broken down. And I do, I, I'm confident that your message, and God's using you, man, to do gnarly things, to, to get that message of there's hope, and life is crazy, and it's not always fair, but there's hope, and believe that you, you, know, you can do anything, but it takes hard work. Yes. Thank you, Erin. Yeah, so, thanks, Bethany, so man. You rock. I appreciate it, girl. I hope your elbow feels better. And uh, I send you vibes. And, and uh, you know. Love to everyone, too. I will. I will. Yes. <laughs>